And the results are in and another election night is in the books. We hear from the winners to find out what they have to say about some tight races and the road ahead. Plus, another arrest is made in connection to the death of a 10-year-old boy at a Kansas water park. The charges he now faces as extradition looms. The week begins with a house fire in St. Joseph and continues today with an investigation into the cause. Plus, another fire, now a thing of the past, giving new life to the area in the form of a car dealership. We'll tell you where. And a community mourns as a Missouri police officer killed in the line of duty is laid to rest today. Plus, pregnant moms who do drugs could soon face felony charges. We explain as we get started this Monday, March 12, 2018. Good morning. This is News Press Now Morning Edition. President Trump has agreed to sit down for talks with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. In the meeting, uh, if that does take place, it would be the first ever face-to-face -face negotiation between the sitting leaders of North Korea and the U.S. Hinadoba has more on how the meeting came morning. to be. Also on Thursday, Day, the president formally announced tariffs on imported steel and aluminum. Canada and Mexico are exempt for now. Their status will depend on the results of the NAFTA talks that are underway right now. The new tariffs go into effect two weeks from today. All right, let's head to the Web Center. Molly Bernard over there now. Molly, uh, you got a nice forecast for us, at least for the day ahead. A very nice forecast for us, in my opinion. When the temperatures are that warm, it's just so hard for the snow to stick on any of the surfaces. And I think that's what we'll see this weekend as well. That's true. Really, any surface. Any surface. Any of the surfaces. Any them. All right, we'll hear more from Molly in a bit. Right now, let's get back some news. The St. Joseph Grocery Store, or a St. Joseph Grocery Store, excuse me, could find itself on the hook for further damages in a wrongful death claim. The claim involves a woman who died after receiving the wrong medication at the pharmacy. The Western District of the Missouri Court of Appeals sent the case back to Buchanan County so a jury could consider a claim for damages due to aggravating circumstances. The lawsuit centers on the 2013 death of Joyce Euler. She was supposed to receive medication to help her to keep her from retaining fluids. Instead, the Hy-Vee Pharmacy gave her methotrexate, which is a powerful anti-cancer drug that can have lethal side effects. A jury heard the case against Hy-Vee and found in the family's favor, awarding $2 million in damages. At the end of the trial, the judge granted a motion that kept the jury from considering aggravating circumstances when awarded damages. The appeals court said a local jury can now consider that issue. A spokesperson for Hy-Vee issued a statement yesterday saying they cannot begin to understand the pain and sadness the family endured and the company changed its pharmacy uh, process in response to that incident. Case filed three weeks ago against St. Joseph Company, accused of illegally storing hazardous materials, has yet to produce any new activity in federal court. HBI Products Incorporated has been ordered to clean up six sites around the city that contain hazardous materials. The new case stems from an original court order seven years ago, but there's been no response from the company. Meanwhile, a citizens group continues to meet in hopes of finding out why HBI has delayed the cleanup. February 14th order seeks to hold the company in contempt. Former Attorney General John Ashcroft stumps for a local candidate vying for a seat at the Capitol. Who, when, and where when we return. But first, we're heading to Norway, guys. One of our favorite cameras, I always say it, but man, I love this one. Right on the front of a train, if you can't tell. Although often when we take this camera, it goes right into a tunnel and you can't see anything. So this is a nice treat. It's 637. This is News Press Now Morning Edition. We will be right back. Police say the investigation is ongoing to determine why the officers were sent to the wrong house. They were originally sent to a home because of a 911 call about a disturbance. They apparently went to the wrong home. That is when they encountered a gunman inside the home during the search. Christopher Ryan Morton is the second Clinton police officer killed in the line of duty in less than a year. The 30-year-old returned to the force after Gary Michael died. Missouri State Highway Patrol identified the suspect in that shooting as 37-year-old James Waters of Clinton. He was found dead yesterday in a Clinton home where the officers were shot hours earlier while trying to apprehend him. CBS affiliate KCTV5's Angie Ricano spoke to the suspect's cousin and has this. Accused school shooter Nicholas Cruz has been indicted by a grand jury. It tops our look at stories that are making national headlines. A 19-year-old is charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder in the first degree and 17 counts of attempted murder in the first degree. 14 students and three adults were killed in the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School on Valentine's Day. Cruz's public defender says he'll plead guilty if prosecutors take the death penalty off the table, paving the way for a life sentence. A bill that restricts gun sales and allows some teachers to carry weapons to school is on its way to Florida. Governor Rick Scott, members of the Florida House, approved the measure Wednesday in a 67 to 50 vote. The bill is in response to the deadly mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. St. Joseph City Council met with the Capital Improvements Program Citizens Committee yesterday to discuss a list of proposed projects for funding. Council members unanimously supported the list, but there were a couple of citizens in the audience who had concerns over how the projects are rated and chosen for funding. After seeing that some projects that were 
were rated low made the list in the end. Committee members say the ratings are done first, then all projects are discussed and voted on. But one man felt that this negates the need to even have a rating system at all, something that one city council member disagrees with. There will have to be an official vote next week. Meanwhile, CIP committee will start marketing for the five-year half-cent sales tax that would find the projects if passed, or fund those projects, rather. For a complete list of the projects and the supplemental projects the committee approved, head on over to newspressnow.com. Efforts are underway to repeal the Missouri prevailing wage law for projects paid for by public funds. Tuesday, the Missouri House of Representatives approved a bill to repeal the state's prevailing wage laws, which set a minimum hourly wage for laborers on public projects. The bill still needs to make it through the state Senate, but its passage could help public entities extend taxpayer dollars on projects. Those projects range from repairs and general improvements to new construction. East Buchanan School District Superintendent Paul Minching says the bill is a bit of a double-edged sword. Ten years ago when we were building it. Area Representative Dallas Johnson voted on the legislation and Pat Conway voted against it. It may not feel like it today, but boating season is almost here. To help prepare boaters for the water, the Missouri State Highway Patrol is offering an education course. It's all part of the Spring Board Campaign. The campaign encourages boaters to register for a certified boating course during the week of March 18th through 24th. Through Page will offer the free class on March 24th, starting at 9 a.m. Once certified, the license will be good for life in the state of Missouri. Missouri Highway Patrol also responded to the scene as directing traffic on Interstate 229. The home itself, as you can see, is a total loss. The blast and resulting fire really left nothing but rubble where it stood. We spoke to a man who lives immediately next door to the home that exploded. Here, he describes what he heard and tells us the people who live in the home, where the explosion happened, have a history of experimenting with homemade fireworks. Saunders says police tell him the ATF will be investigating this incident. However, we have not been able to confirm that with authorities. We are getting reports that as many as three individuals may be receiving emergency medical care as a result of the explosion. At least one was transported to Mosaic Life Care by ambulance. We also know one person was treated for smoke inhalation at the scene. We've had news crews on the scene since this happened. Joining us live now from where this is all going on is News Press Now's Nathan Elgren. Nathan, what's going on out there right now? We will keep you updated on this story events warrant throughout the day on air, online at newspressnow.com and all of our social media platforms. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. We are once again breaking into your regularly scheduled programming to update you on a developing situation in downtown St. Joseph. This is the view at 5th and Francis as seen from the rooftop of the news press building. What we know is that at 1021 this morning, a call came in of a structure fire at the Pioneer building in the downtown area. That is what you are seeing. The smoke pour from there. Fire crews from all over the city rushed to the building where it was deemed too dangerous to fight that fire from inside. All crews ordered out of the building and have been fighting the fire from all sides now for about three hours. We've had crews at that fire all morning long as well going into the afternoon. That is where Morning Edition's Molly Bernard is right now. She joins us live from the scene. We did get word that a parking structure adjacent to that fire had been evacuated just in case that building did collapse and it sounds like they, according to Molly, are going to try to control collapse that. We've also seen some concern from uh, people on Facebook about the living facility Corby Place that is there nearby. Uh, I spoke to them personally, staff there, that say there is no danger. They were assured by the fire chief that there was no danger and they did not evacuate. Now, we did speak to Chief Training Officer, a Chief Training Officer with the St. Joseph Fire Department. His name is Mike Nealon. He tells us, as Molly did, that the fire was not just contained to the Pioneer Building. We did ask about possible occupants in the building at the time of the fire. We have confirmed that there were no residents renting out space in the Pioneer building, but here's what Mike Nealon had to say about possible occupants and the sheer scope of this fire. Our understanding now is that the DeKalb Fire Department did provide a pumper truck or was asked to provide a pumper truck. This is video exclusive to NP Now. This is the only place you will see this. This is at the height of the fire from the air. We, of course, will continue to cover this fire here on NBC and Fox 26, as well as online at Facebook and Twitter. We've been live on the News Press Now Facebook page throughout the day. There, you can witness events as they have unfolded. It is still there on our page. Please go check it out for now. Please asking everyone to stay clear of the area near 5th and Francis. As always, keep it here on News Press Now. Courthouse in St. Louis, where Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner is holding a press conference concerning the felony computer tampering case with soon-to-be former Governor Eric Greitens. As you can see, they are uh, people are beginning to file in the room now. 
And there is Kim Gardner herself approaching the podium. We're going to take you there live now to see what she has says about the resolution with now Governor Eric Greitens. Well, Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner there not answering questions on the way out, as you can see, saying she would only talk about the computer tampering charges against now Governor Eric Greitens and saying that uh, it was not a witch hunt, contradicting the comments of the governor just days ago. She says she is confident that the state could pursue charges against Mr. Greitens, but also says that uh, based on the evidence, while she does feel that she could pursue charges, charges not always the right thing to do, and therefore she used the term dismiss the charges against the governor. However, I don't believe uh, that was the proper term. I believe she means drop the charges, which of course leaves up in the air the fact that charges could be brought again. No indication that that is the case, though. She says now it is time to heal the wounds of the state before walking out. We will, of course, have all the up-to-date information. A funeral for a Missouri police officer who was gunned down in the line of duty last week takes place today. It tops our look at stories we'll be following today. Officer Christopher Ryan Morton of Clinton was killed last week, or last Tuesday night, excuse me, when he was responding to a domestic disturbance. Police say that a 30-year-old Army veteran arrived at the scene. A man opened fire from inside the house, touched off a shooting there. Two other officers were injured, and the suspect was found dead inside that house. Maryville Bar, that was the site of a deadly crash involving a drunk driver, has reopened, and the owner made it his goal to honor the memory of loved ones who have passed away. Our reporter Jessica Kopp was there and has this. A lawsuit against the Mid Buchanan R5 school district alleging discrimination is set to go to trial. Filed by the mother of a former elementary school student, the complaint filed in Buchanan County Circuit Court alleges the student was bullied and harassed by a school principal and resource officer over the course of the 2015-16 school year. According to the complaint, the student was repeatedly subject to bullying and harassment by his teachers and a school resource officer because of a disability. The case is set to go to jury trial on March 25th of next year in front of Judge Melissa Lawyer. In federal court, the Mid-Buchanan County School District is facing a different lawsuit. This lawsuit alleges high school principal David Rapp and football coach Aaron Fritz were aware of bullying and harassment of a student and did not act accordingly. The lawsuit also alleges a student was urinated on and called derogatory names. The lawsuit states the incidents occurred over the course of a year and the student was eventually admitted to a mental health facility to be treated for acute situational depression and anxiety. School officials declined to comment. Well, what's considered endangering the welfare of a child could be changing in the state of Missouri. That change deals with un unborn children, their mothers, and drugs. I spoke with lawmakers about the pros and the cons. Take a look. House Bill 1875 could take pregnant mothers who do drugs from the daycare center to the law enforcement center by making it a felony to do those drugs while pregnant. A little bit warmer here, so we just saw that rain. So hopefully we'll see those snow chances move out, just some spring thunderstorms move in. Ooh, no. You know you're talking my language. Well, President Trump is taking the first step toward putting guns in the hands of teachers nationwide. Overnight, the White House released his plan to make schools safe and deal with gun violence. Tracy Potts has that. And South Korean envoys returned to Seoul yesterday after meeting with President Trump in Washington. The South Koreans visited the White House and relayed an invitation for a meeting between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and President Trump. President Trump accepted that invitation. He said the meeting with Kim could fizzle without an agreement or could result in the greatest deal for the world to ease nuclear tensions between the two countries. Smoking and pregnancy do not mix, but not all moms seem to agree. We're going to take a look when we return, but first we're heading to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. What a beautiful sight that is. In the meantime, we're going to watch that nice sunrise come up. It, it, all, it kind of looked like St. Joseph was on fire. That is a very cool video. Speaking of very cool, that's your cue, Molly. That's the temperature outside mm -hmm. this morning. Air conditioners are going to get a workout today. They are, and tons of people were, I mean, I, a, a bunch of people were, have broken air conditioning. I was, <laughs> all right, moving on. Forget it. The heat's getting to her. It right? is. It's, the heat is getting to me. It's getting to us all. All right, more from Angie in just a bit. Let's move on to some news. Okay. Not the commercial, I'll fix it. All right. and You but, know what I can't fix? Uh, the heat. It's 10 degrees warmer right now than it was yesterday. It is warmer right now than it was yesterday. I was thinking in terms of this mm -hmm. afternoon. So we were both right. We were both right. That's, that's a win-win. It's a win-win, exactly. All right, more of this win-win uh, personality over here in just a bit.